Hello everyone and welcome to Joy Homestead. My name is Jamie and this morning I am prepping some hash brown casseroles for easy breakfast freezer meals. I'm gonna do two types. One is just a creamy, cheesy, traditional kind of cracker barrel style hash brown casserole, no eggs. And then the second one, I'm just gonna add ham to it for a little bit of extra texture and protein. So come with me as I make some hash brown casseroles. To start, I have the oven preheated at 350 degrees. I am using just store-bought hash browns. It's the 30 ounce bag of shredded hash brown potatoes. You could do this as the diced as well, um, but I like the way the shredded come out. So for the double batch, that's the one I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna use two bags of these shredded hash browns. And then for the single batch that I'm gonna add the ham to, I'm only gonna use one bag. So once again, shredded hash browns, you could also use the diced ones, but this is a 30 ounce bag, any brand you like. Okay, so next we are going to start adding in all the yummy stuff. So here I have two sticks of butter melted for the double batch. Throw that in there. Need two cans of cream of chicken soup, and you could even do the, you know, reduced sodium, healthier versions if you want. I just happen to have these on hand. of soup that you like. Um, cream of chicken is the best. We're not really big mushroom eaters, so cream of mushroom is not normally here in the house. Next, we're going to add uh, 32 ounces of sour cream. So that's just two pints or a quart of sour cream, and I'm using full flavor sour cream for this. You will see this is not the healthiest hash brown casserole, but it tastes so good. All right. So there's one pint. Two pints. I don't know about you, but I love sour cream. So this makes me happy. Okay, now we are going to add a half teaspoon of pepper. So this is a quarter teaspoon, so I'm gonna do it twice. And that's it. Now I did not add any salt because I use salted butter. So you might need to add salt to taste depending on how you like it. And now what I'm gonna do is add in roughly two cups of shredded cheese. I have some Colby Jack cheese here. I buy it in the block and then just shred it. And then if there's any leftover, I'll put it in a baggie for later use. So let's say that's one cup and two cups. I might add just a little bit more. You can never have enough cheese. Cheese is my favorite food group. Okay, that's everything that's going into the traditional one. So I'm just gonna take a spoon, get in there, start mixing it around. Oh, and I meant to tell you that these um, hash browns are thawed. So I took them out of the freezer and let them thaw in the fridge overnight. So they're nice and soft. Okay, just kind of get in there. And if you're doing a double batch like this, you're definitely gonna need Look at these little burnt hash browns, my goodness. You're definitely gonna need um, to have a big bowl for this because as you can see, there's a lot going on. Let's mix it in as best as you can. I'm gonna pull out these little, little black bits. There's nothing wrong with those hash browns, but you know, 
you don't normally want to see that <laughs> when you're eating something that's a very creamy kind of yellow color. and more cheese is gonna get added before we put it in the oven. Oh, creamy, cheesy goodness, goodness. Cream, let's see, you've got sour cream, cheese, butter, cream of chicken, a lot of creamy goodness. Okay. So that is it for the hamless one. So now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I have my thawed hash browns. I'm gonna add in just, this is just one bag of the shredded hash browns. This is just one stick of melted butter. Get all that in there. One can of cream of chicken. see them walking around but my dogs are in here with me whenever there is something happening in the kitchen they are not far behind waiting for something to fall okay now I'm doing one pint or 16 ounces of sour cream you could do a light sour cream for this as well I'm just going with the full flavor Next, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then the cheese, so roughly a cup. <laughs> I'll say a cup, but mine's probably gonna be more than a cup. Just because cheese, cheese is life. Oh, I love cheese. Okay. And now I have a cup and a half of diced ham. This is a ham we cooked back in the fall and I just chopped it up and froze diced, uh, some diced portions and some sliced portions for future recipes. Now I'm gonna stir it all together. So this one right here with the added ham, this is a meal in itself. So, so good. And you could do less ham, more ham, less cheese, more cheese, however you want to do it. You could do bacon. You could add onions and peppers and all sorts of good stuff to this. Okay, so here we have our two mixes, so the traditional and then one with ham. Okay, so here I have the baking dishes for the casserole. This deeper one I'm going to use for the ham and then the three uh, more shallow ones, I'm hoping I can get all of the traditional hash brown casserole into that. So here I keep my oil in spray bottles. I just got this off of Amazon. So this is um, an extra light olive oil. So I'm just gonna give it a spritz into each dish, and then I'm gonna use my fun little silicone brush to evenly distribute. You could use your hands, you could use whatever you have. You could also do butter this instead. Just get that nice and coated because that ooey gooey cheese, it's gonna stick. So you want to try to prevent that as much as possible. Let's start with the ham. Let's swap these over. So I'm gonna put all of this in to this deeper dish here. Okay, oh, that's heavy. Put that in there. Oh yeah, that'll fit. Little 
smush, or as I, t I say smoosh all the time. <laughs> And then the leftover cheese, I'm gonna just sprinkle it on top, put however much cheese you want. I think I'm, I'll probably tell you a cup. A cup tends to be the standard measurement that I'll say, but it's normally more than a cup because cheese is so wonderful. Okay, just gonna spread that around. Okay, so that is the one with ham. Now coming over here, for these three, I'm going to try to distribute it as evenly as possible. It even smells good now, just smelling <laughs> butter and cheese and cream. creative with hash brown casserole. Now, most hash brown casseroles that you see for freezer meals, they're egg-based. Um, this is not, which is super handy if you don't have any eggs. And the way egg prices and egg everything these days, it's it's been a little crazy. If you hear construction noises, <laughs> that's my husband, he's outside working on a project. Always something going on around here. Okay. Almost all of it. By the way, if you do not have a super large stainless steel bowl, these things are amazing. I have a whole set of them, and they are just wonderful tools to have in the kitchen. That way they have an even bake. If you're trying to, if you're to try to cook these all at the same time. Alright. So there we go. And I'm gonna top all of them with cheese. And you could use any cheese you want. This is Colby Jack. Um, Colby Jack is kind of our standard cheese that we use in a lot of recipes. We use it in a lot of our Mexican inspired recipes. But you could use any cheese you want. You could do a sharp cheddar. You could just do a traditional mild cheddar. Whatever you like or whatever you have on hand, all cheese is delicious. The dogs. Patiently waiting. There's a saw. <laughs> okay. That's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all four of these in the oven for, I'll, I'll set the timer for 50 minutes. So this is the oven is set at 350, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to set the timer for 50 minutes and if they're done, I'll take them out, but they might need a few extra minutes just because there's so much going into the oven. So I'm gonna put these in and when they're done, I'll bring them out and show you what it looks like. Here they are, the finished product. So what I'm gonna do now is cut them into single serving sizes. And I have these glass dishes for meal prep. So I will put a single serving in each one of these. They come with these nifty lids. The great thing about these is that you can microwave them. You can put them in the oven. Just make sure you take the plastic lid off. Um, and they freeze well. These containers are wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide these up into their serving sizes, put them in the freezer. They also stack wonderfully, which is nice. And uh, yeah, when it's time to pull them out for breakfast, I'll pull them out the night before and put them in the fridge. That way they are thawed enough to just reheat like normal in the morning. Thanks for coming along with me on today's freezer meal adventure. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon.